All right, so now I'm gonna take this off because we don't actually need this for our demo, but that was just so that we could test the horizontal movement at this point. The next step is going to be to add in our player. So I'm going to navigate to my prefabs folder, grab my player start game object, and let's change her name to player. And she has a sprite renderer to display the sprite an animator with an animator controller. And this animator controller, if we open it up, has already been configured, right? All the animations are in here. And all we need to do is pass these parameters in via script to play the animations, right? So if you wanna explore this and figure out how it's set up, you can, it's in the asset package. I'm not gonna go through the setup for this because it's not strictly relevant to our 2D physics concept, uh, but we are gonna use it, right? So we can have a nice looking character. Um, okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is add to our player a script which, oh, and so I mentioned the animator. Let me just finish the components. So we have the animator, we have a rigid body 2D, which is also kinematic like our box, and we have a capsule collider 2D, right? And if we frame selected, we can see it there, and that's what we're checking the collision against. Okay. So we're gonna hit add component and we're gonna call this player platformer controller, select new script and select create an add. And then we are going to double click it to open it for editing. Now, this is going to extend our physics object class. So we're gonna add that in. And before we begin to write our code in here, we need to add one thing to the physics object class, which is a compute velocity function. And this is gonna be called from update and it's gonna be overridden in our platformer controller. So we're gonna add a protected virtual function that returns void called compute velocity which is gonna have no implementation in this class, but is gonna be called from update. The other thing that we're gonna do in update every frame is we're going to set target velocity to equal vector two dot zero. So we're gonna zero that out every frame so that we're not using uh, target velocity from the previous frame. Okay. Now, in our player platformer controller, we can get rid of update and we're gonna replace it with a protected override void compute velocity. So this is gonna be called every frame by the base class and we're gonna use it uh, to check for input and to update our animations when we get there. So in compute velocity, we're gonna need to get values for our target velocity. So we're gonna declare a new vector two called move and set it to zero at the beginning of each computation. So we're going to say vector two move equals vector two dot zero. Then we wanna set the X value of move based on the incoming control input from the player. So we're gonna say move dot X equals input dot get axis horizontal, right? And this is gonna get input from the keyboard or a gamepad or whatever is connected sending input. Then we're going to check if the player has pressed the jump button. We're gonna say if input.getButton down jump and grounded is true, right? So we're not gonna allow the player to jump in midair, no double, triple jumping uh, for this character. Uh, you could add that if you wanted to for fun, but in this case, our character is gonna have to be on the ground uh, in order for her to jump. And then we are going to, if the player has jumped, uh, we're gonna wanna add velocity along the Y axis. So we're gonna need a variable to set this velocity. So we're gonna add a public float called jump takeoff speed, and that's gonna be equal to seven. And then in our conditional, 
if the jump button has been pressed, we are going to set the velocity dot y to equal jump takeoff speed. Now, the other thing that we want to be able to do is to cancel our jump if they let go of the button. So we're going to add an else if input dot get button up, meaning the button has been released, jump, then we are going to subtract velocity to allow the player to cancel their jump in midair. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the velocity along the y is greater than zero, meaning we're moving upwards, then we're going to say velocity dot y equals velocity dot y times 0.5. So we are going to reduce the velocity when the player lets go of the jump button. We're going to reduce it by half. OK, next we want to multiply the movement vector that we've calculated based on the speed of the player. So now we're going to say we need a movement speed. So we're going to add a public float called max speed that's going to be equal to seven and then we're going to set our target velocity to equal move times max speed save that and now let's test and now we can move back and forward we can cancel our jump we can jump high right we cancel our jump if we let go Jump high up in the air, but we still can't play our animations or uh, rotate in the correct direction, right? So let's pause for a minute to take some questions and then we'll continue.